most kids, most kids have a kid voice. Like you hear them on in a movie, no, they sound all the no. same. You same voice as today, yeah. right now. No, no like Lily has a Benjamin Button voice. <laughs> back, back, back voice you, yeah, yeah, exactly. Years old. She's slowly getting younger. <laughs> you should say that. Hello you there. Have that into, you have to save that and edit that into the podcast. to another episode of the Friday Night Movie Podcast. I'm keeping my voice extra radio-ish for my sisters today because I know it cracks them up when I use my radio voice. Um, Lil, calling in from the Canary Islands. Hi. How are you? How are you? I- I'm extra horsey. Horse horse voice today. You've you got your horse voice. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something else. I, I, I've been... Why? I've been watching... I'm extra hoary. Extra, extra, <laughs> extra horsey. <laughs> I've been watching home videos because I uncovered this huge trove of home videos and the hoarseness of your voice when you were a little child. I don't know if at some point I have your permission, but I, I would Joan, like to know. It's Joan River. I, oh I my feel, God, if you could pull an audio, that would be amazing. I, I feel like when we reach a certain podcast milestone, I don't know if it's 2,000 downloads or how, a certain number of reviews or something like that, I want to start releasing videos of you both when you were little uh, um, uh, because I have uncovered just gold, but your voice is just... Un, like, your voice sounds younger now than it did when you were four years old. True, and I the best way to describe my voice at four years old is Joan River. Like, yeah, exactly. Or Joan River. Can we if talk? You were to, yeah, if you were to pull up any video of her speaking, that's what I sound like when I was a four year old. So and today how, I'm bringing it back a little bit because yeah. um, I had a big weekend out here in Tenerife, a big, huge, gigantic work event, which in some ways was a success, which is great. In other ways, a wonderful learning experience. Um, and so um, in Spain, there's a great saying. It says, what doesn't kill you makes you fatter. And considering <laughs> I, after my basically like 48 hours of work, I think I slept for four hours and 48 of um, a huge work thing. Um, I then sat down with my husband and ate through an entire gigantic four cheese pizza and two massive orders of like gourmet pasta and all i could think of was that is true it doesn't kill you makes you fatter it's 100 accurate that, that, that um, is that is amazing well how other so congratulations you guys hosted a huge championship it was like yes, like cr- like bigger than the all valley championship at the end of karate kid you know mm-hmm. i have to yeah, say it's up there with all valley oh, yeah we take a lot of our direction from the all Valley Championship, and we try to we try to have somebody one at time at least every champion and say bring him a body bag, um, at the very least, um, at that uh, to have that kind of rivalry. How do you, how do you say but, bring him a body bag in Spanish? I don't, I don't know. What about una sweet? una bolsa de cuerpo? Oh. Yeah, pretty much, I oh, guess. Okay, my well, Spanish is really but, good. But it was good. You're feeling good, right? Yeah, it was. Um, it was good. Yeah, well, it was good. And just happy, happy it's over. I will say I take issue with the fact that your son got a medal and I'm still not given my yellow belt yet. So like dad has Another what, like a, like a red belt and your son has a, a medal and I'm, I still have this white belt that is like a baby white belt that you get, you guys gave me, I think to make me feel fat that like can't even tie around <laughs> my waist. <laughs> People are smaller in Spain, number one. Number two, my son earned that medal. <laughs> He's two. He's two years old and he earned it. So you just reflect all that. All right. Fair enough. Okay, Beck, you're calling in from California. How are you today? Today in particular, I'm actually not so hot. I'm feeling under the weather. So um, there might be less of a filter today. I might pay less attention just as a warning. But in general, besides today, I'm doing great. So, so, really. so speaking of paying attention, people ask me, they say, oh, is it weird not being in the same place? And I say, you know, we've done now, this is our 29th episode that we're recording right now, and we've done most of them remote. And I said, no, I, I think I've really gotten used to doing it this way. And recently we did one in person, and I saw my sisters were basically like on their phones the entire time. <laughs> and it was really <laughs> distracting. So I'm like running the show, taking notes, watching the sound. And Becky's like, ooh, I got a WhatsApp from Shelly. No, 
No, I'm where I am DBing stuff most no, no, of the that's time. Fair. You are and Lily's doing something because her phone always goes off. Like mm. yeah, there's always like like a video that pops up on Lily's phone. She's always on like Instagram, I think. Um, that is not true. To be fair, I podcast on my mom, our mom's old computer that she gave me because for some reason the work mic's better with it. And me, what no matter does what that I have do, anything no, no, to do I was going to say, it's mom's computer. And let me tell you, do you have any idea of the amount of crap computers. that pops up on this thing? I get like weird, like random chat apps that, of course, only mom downloads <laughs> and have like randos from like her Concordia degree in Montreal. Not even Slack. It's like like old Friendster chats or something that only mom would find the way to download. And these like old like ex alumni or something and keep popping up and being like, "Hi, Fanny." <laughs> During and so I try to close all windows and put it on mute, but it's somehow only mom's old computer chats I managed to get through on this podcast. Who, who in our family doesn't have an old computer for mom that also oh, yeah. has all sorts of things wrong with it that only happened to mom? It's a lemon. It's a lemon. That's mom's line. That's mom's line. It's a lemon. No, I, got a lemon. I, I get my own computers that are lemons. I don't need to inherit and, mom. And then dad your gets. Mom. Is dad mad at mom or her computer when she when he says he you know you have too much crap on that computer? No, he's also just like stop buying Mac, you idiots. <laughs> you <laughs> dad, dad is like a loyal PC mother. Android guy. Um, I use <laughs> both. Um, so I have so I have some stuff. I have some fun news. Wait, to wait, wait, Shai, oh. why don't you? first tell us how you're doing oh i thank you well i'm doing well i was under the weather this week but i'm kind of bouncing back now went for a little walk with the family this morning i'm you know i'm kind of a changed man and that i both walked and did the elliptical in the same day mostly Ooh, because double whammy it, what double whammy yeah double whammy like... kind of strange but i have some i have some cool news to report number one at the time that this podcast will be airing uh our dear friends, uh, Lindsay and Jen, who we talked about last week, total coincidence, by the way, that we talked about their new website, sundogsfire.com. They surprised me moments ago by letting me know and showing me a preview of the fact that they are going to have a featured artist page on their new site, and they have made me their first featured artist. So Whoa. on Friday, on, oh, on, mazel tov. So on Friday, when this is airing, I urge everybody, please go to sundogsfire.com, check out the amazing work of uh, Aferos XII and Ronk X Gen. Those are both their Twitter handles. Brilliant, brilliant artists. Uh, please go through all of their stuff, buy something. I, again, I mentioned before, I buy their stuff on a regular basis. Uh, but they also now have a section featuring uh, the Pancake for the Table stuff, features the podcast, features the T-shirts that we've been oh uh, that, that that we created. So uh, it's a really cool thing, and I'm truly honored. These are two of the most amazing artists that I, I have encountered, and the fact that they would be willing to put my stuff next to theirs just blows me away. So shout out to those guys, and thank you. The next, I thing, am on. Hold on, I am on their website right now. So, so if I get distracted, it's because I'm. Browsing so the site. It, it's not. It's it's won't be live now when we're taping it. I mean, there there's a, there's a preview of it, but it's not actually announced until we are launching this podcast. Okay. No, I know, but I'm just saying I'm on their website oh, looking okay. around. I can go back again oh. to the website. Oh, yeah. What's your on it? Don't oh, I see. What you mean. You're, just looking on their, you're just looking on their website. Their website's amazing. Uh, Lindsay's original characters, Cat and Dee, are, are wild, and uh, Jen's art is just everything from incredible, cool comics to really cool. I don't know if whimsical, but fantastical art. Some of it inspired by great music. It's really, really cool. Uh, so i honored to be a part of that. Uh, on a sad note, one of my favorite TV shows, in fact, a show that I shouted out to last week, Ash vs. Evil Dead, was, no! was canceled by stars. And the Aww. first thing, the first thing I want to... What do stars have, like, better to do besides Outlander? Honestly, now they're getting too too big for their britches. <laughs> they're like, ooh, we put out one fancy show with like Scotland and sex. Now we can't have our old school startup shows that yeah, got fans yeah. to even watch stars. I don't understand fake channel. <laughs> I don't even understand the economics of it, but there's a couple things I want to say. Number one, I am truly grateful that we got three seasons of it. I remember watching the first season and being anxious that like, oh my god, what if this doesn't continue? Bruce Campbell, I have loved him since renting Army of Darkness as like a teenager with my friends after school one day. Uh, I, you know that I'm, I've seen the musical, I don't know, five or six times of Evil Dead. And what's also amazing is the new characters they introduced into the show, played by Dana DiLorenzo and Ray Santiago, uh, Kelly Maxwell, and Pablo are 
as amazing as the character of Ash, which is kind of amazing, right? You had a character carry a franchise for however many years, for 30 years, and then you introduce these characters into a TV show. The other characters are great, too. Lucy Lawless's character, um, his new, the new character of his daughter are great, but those two in particular, look, they will live on in the canon as just legendary, and those two actors are amazing. But I guess the economics did not work out for stars, and they canceled the show. There's two more episodes left. Um, but one of the coolest things about it, and one of the coolest things about what we've been doing with the podcast and with art and everything is the awesome people that we get to encounter being fans of things and the ghost tweeters, which includes Susan Layton, AKA Susan on the ledge, weirdo, Anthony Gavin, the ghost, which is an awesome artist comic situation. People really should check that out. Really funny sense of humor. Um, and really thoughtful as well. All of those folks have been so fun to interact with, and I'm going to keep doing my Ash vs. Evil Dead animations. I already finished the one for this week. It'll post uh, on Sunday at 8.30, so I'll post it, and then I'll have one more at least. And then I'm thinking of even doing some other stuff just for the awesome ghost tweeters. So that's a huge, huge bummer. I don't really understand uh, the economics of why stars would do that. But the only the bonus is, is that on April 29th, when I watch that last episode, I can cancel it, and then I'll just buy the episode for myself later. And I can cancel stars, and just in time to pick up YouTube Red so I can watch the new Cobra Kai TV show, so, which had a theatrical commercial before the movie that Allie and I went to see last night. So, um, Get out! Really? They really had... Well, in the, so, in... so, now, so now that there's more information revealed about the the show is there mm -hmm. how did you know this theatrical release was going to be any better than that piece of no, crap no, trailer they put like on the, it was the a proper trailers, trailer they have like longer trailers so the show is from johnny's perspective is daniel supposed to be like a bit of a dink like is he supposed to be like kind of like a like a bit of an a-hole like i don't get it i, I was like a, I, I was like a little upset i i think that the resume Wait, did you see the trailer well, on just on YouTube, yeah, the, the new no trailer. Course. I think oh. I think they're playing with your expectations a bit. I think Daniel, who is a great character, especially after you get to that third Karate Kid, which I know some people don't like, but the way his character evolves, he he has always had some sort of jerky tendencies, right? I mean, this is the guy who poured water on the the dudes and kind of started fights and had a bad temper. Yeah, it's really true. So he yeah, has that, he's kind of a baby. He has that side of him, so I think that's going to be explored. I don't think Johnny's perfect either. There I think I think at some point No, we will... know Johnny's not perfect. He's the bully. Yeah, so I think they're going to play with your expectations a bit. I suspect in the end they will be friends in one way or another. I don't I don't think I think that's where the story is going, but I don't know for sure. And then, uh, and then, speaking of our childhood, I have one more great surprise for you guys. So I, I how would I say this? I encountered, I tracked down a collector who has shared with me eleven DVDs, six hours each, of today's special episode, <gasps> taped off, wow. taped off, the, taped off like the television in Idaho in the eighties. So it's oh like. My God, no it, way. It's not super amazing quality. Oh my god, I want to I want to rewatch the show so badly. So you you so anyways, I would love we we're going to have to talk about it later, but that was my big surprise for you guys that I'm it, so excited. It is it is like super painstaking work and I think one of my biggest conclusions is is how like talented those people were. They were singing and dancing and Puppeting and wow, that 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 show. Is I just like I'm so excited because I have my memory of what the show was, and now I need to see if it if it like lines up. You know what I mean? The amount of stuff they had to do in each one of those episodes, I was like, oh, this is a lot of work. Nowadays, they would not do that much for. They would not write that many songs for a single episode of television. And it seems that there were again eleven DVDs, six hours each. Think about how many episodes that is. That is a lot of smooth jazz like songs that they have. And that and that theme song is one of the greatest theme songs ever. I so, am so so excited you, you because got, you know I haven't seen the show since I was whatever age. So you, you'll dig into some episodes, and I'll give them to you. You'll dig into some episodes, and we'll report cool. back. Okay. Now let's get into the the show. We watched a movie. We all watched a movie. Uh, and coincidentally, we didn't even plan it. Well, I mean, no, but I think it didn't... starts where like one of us buys it on Shy's iTunes, so it makes it facilitates the other. Yeah, right? Watching no, there's it. a lot. There's a lot of new. There's a lot of new stuff on Shy's. It is true. Like, oh, Molly's game. We got. You know, there's a lot to. There's a lot we could have watched. Which I and... endorse for our fans out there. I endorse Molly's game. Molly's right, game is that, that. is that with the Rock? 
No, that's no, just uh, a casting. Uh, Jumanji no, but I'm, that does sound. Shy. Jumanji. Oh, well. Molly's game is, um, yeah, Jessica Chastain. It's not the sequel and to the Idris game. Elba. It's not the sequel to the game with Michael Douglas. Do you remember that movie? No, no it's nobody not. Nobody ever would have ever made question. a sequel. But nobody would make a sequel to that movie. I remember liking it at the time. Felt Although, exciting. okay, wait. I would, lately I've been playing Sorry. this game with myself. I've been meaning to tell you guys. I'm just going to interrupt everything for one second. Lately, I've been playing this game. Maybe it become a future bit on the podcast of. What did I like? What did I call it to myself? Something like, uh, "What's that IMDb guy or something?" Where you think of a movie really quick, like just now, you guys mentioned the game, and you can't remember a, a main person that was in the movie, and you have to figure it out without looking at IMDb or googling it. Oh, I love like, all that. On your own. But it was Michael and, Douglas. No, but who plays the brother? the brother? Is it Christian exactly. Slater? Is it Christian is it, Slater? Is it know. Edward Norton? Is it Edward Norton? <laughs> is it Chris, I, in my mind, is it it's Barry Christian Pepper? Slater. For some reason, my mind went to Barry Pepper. <laughs> Barry Pepper. Well, I, th- I feel like if you're going Ed Norton, Christian Slater, Barry Pepper can fall in that mix, especially in that era. Who is in that mix? So does nobody remember or is it just me? No, I don't even remember a brother character, let alone. No, the brother is who sets it up. the whole game. <laughs> yeah, the brother sets yes, it up. Yes, no, now I remember. But it's like, not Sean when, when, Penn? Is it Sean Penn? Is it Sean no. Penn? There's no Shy. way. But you see, if you can't IMDb it, your mind goes to really crazy places. I, the now, problem is that I, I can't remember remember the the movie well enough to even be able to visualize who the brother like, okay, I wait, wouldn't know if I got it right can, or wrong. Can I tell you what other movie this happened to me lately? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is amazing. <laughs> okay. and so, like, we're not going to look it up then during this episode. That's the deal. We're not no. going to look it up. No, no, Maybe somebody on Twitter oh, will I, just tell I us how stupid we are. But that's, I will tell Oh, you're not supposed to break the game. That's breaking the rules of the game. Yeah, but I just won't. I, but, like, I don't remember well enough, the movie well enough to remember, like, to know if okay. I were going to get it right or wrong. Okay. This whole game in my head, which I've been, I've been playing by myself, okay. not without telling anybody, <laughs> but now I'm so happy to share. This is amazing. Started with the movie... Bandits. Okay, with uh, with um. With, oh yeah. Uh, wait, no, no, no. Hold on, hold on. I've got it. I've got it. Wait, Bruce I, Willis. I with Bruce, Ali Bob Thornton. Bruce, Bruce Willis, Bruce Willis, Billy Bob Thornton, Kate, and Kate Blanchett. Kate okay, Blanchett so and... I go. Wait, I go, who was the other one? Billy Bob Thornton, Bruce Willis, Kate Blanchett. Wait, I go Billy. Guys, wait. I go Billy Bob Thornton. That's immediately what popped to my mind. And then Kate Blanchett, of course, because I hear the song "I Need a Hero" on the radio, which is in the movie. And oh, it's wow, seen with Kate remember. Blanchett. The only thing I remember in that movie is the bank where you flip the winch, the shades, and it becomes like a dollar bill, and that's the sign that there's an emergency in the bank. Okay, that I did not remember at all. Okay, and I, I remember them like having like a movie. weird three-way I marriage at the end. I couldn't remember the other main character. Who was the oh, other yeah. band? The other robber. Jeez. Who is it? It's Bruce Willis. I literally was is it Bruce Willis? Like, it is. But for an hour, I was sitting there like in my head, and I went, I was like, Kevin Costner? But that doesn't sound right. <laughs> I couldn't remember. And I was like, you are not allowed to I, I, uh, IMDb this. You don't have permission because you're in trouble. That You should know this stuff. You're so and, right. And that was for sure a Friday night movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, sure. I remember mm-hmm. when we went to see this year, and everybody was like, "Ooh, nobody expected this to be a bit sad." It was, it was sad crazy. and boring. I don't know. Yeah. That movie is not as good as it the people. It was to- totally misbilled. Like that movie was not correctly trailered. Mm-hmm. And um, anyways, in the end, I had to eventually IMDb because I was going crazy, and it was Bruce Willis that I couldn't remember. Then I was like, "What other movies are like you just don't remember the main character?" Well, Lily, you're so- great at naming our bits. Which, by the way, people listening, we are going to have a page soon that lists all the bits Lily has been working. We're going to do a glossary. A glossary. Yeah. I'm okay. Um, but so I just trust that you'll come up with a good name for this bit. But if, interestingly, we've talked now about bandits and uh, Molly's game and the game, but that's not the movie we're going to talk about today. The movie we're going to talk about today is I, Tanya, starring Margot Robbie and now Oscar winner Allison Janney and Sebastian Stan, who I did not even realize it was him in the film. Really? And the dude who plays Keith on Kingdom, who is amazing. Oh, yeah. Yes. I mean, especially when you get to the end of the movie and you see the actual interviews. Yeah, he's amazing. Of the guy. So I mean, it's excellent. amazing. So where I'd like to start is I'd like to because I, I want to break this down in a few different ways because I feel like there. A, I'll just the, I won't bury the lead. I thought this movie was fantastic, like way better than I I expected it to be good, but it was awesome. 
And I, re- I'm so glad you like it because I loved it, and I was like, I don't know if other people like this movie. I, I love mm-hmm. it, and I, and I thought it was awesome. Part... I thought you might have not liked it, so I'm actually excited to hear that you did like it. We have three, we have three yeses. Oh, this on is a this hard, one. this is a hard buy. Like I actually rewatched. I was really sleepy during the second half of it the first night, so I rewatched the second half this morning, and I was like, I could just keep watching this movie. This movie, is yeah, me too. Buy because when Vlad found out I watched it without him, I was like, don't worry, I want to watch it again. So this like, is, I watched it again a yeah. second time. So I think we're a hard buy on this. And so I'll I'll kick us off by just saying that what I loved about this movie uh, is that this is a, something I... There are certain news events that I remember really clearly as a kid where I was really starting to pay attention to what was going on in the world. And, you know, the Gulf War was one of them. OJ, which is one of them, which it turns out was around the same time. And then the Tanya Harding, Nancy Kerrigan thing was such a big deal. And what I thought was so compelling about this movie is that... It totally challenged whatever I remember. I didn't. It's not like I spent a lot of time thinking about this then or now, but it totally challenged whatever narrative I thought was the actual truth back then. And what everybody, what you and everybody, and still does think is the truth. And what we were just told was the story. I mean, I I think that you know we were told that the story, you know, the sort of good evil of the story, and it added so many layers of complexity that I I I felt like this uncovered. I, it's like I was getting backstory, like or a prequel to my own like pop culture life, and I was like, "Whoa!" Because nowadays, sometimes you see a, you see a movie, you see like Lincoln, for example, right? Which I don't know how much how, how great I think that movie is, but there's not a lot in that movie except maybe, or the, you don't see it like me, <laughs> or, or you don't see it like you. But there's not a lot in that movie that you haven't like heard about if you've heard about Abraham Lincoln. So it just feels like. Uh, Ali described it just feels like like you're in the Hall of Presidents at Disney World, and they're just sort of like yeah, acting I'm like it out we for all you. know he had a log cabin. <laughs> there's no log cabin in the. Movie. I don't think it's a log cabin in the movie. But but then there's some Shocked. interesting stuff about the politics that it's really good. This movie goes goes and gives you a lot more of the story of Tanya Harding and who she was and where she came from and who those characters were who were just these little thumbnails on the news, and that was that but- was pretty. That was pretty amazing for me. But what was interesting about how they did that is that they're giving you all this backstory, but they're giving it to you with the caveat of, like, allegedly, right? Because it's based on interviews with people. And so you notice that constantly throughout the film, it's like she that we're, we're following her version of the events, but then... But then you're getting these little, whether she's breaking the fourth wall or whether we're going to the interview, you kind of get this... Um, you get the the you get like the 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 husband character you get her addressing the camera saying like well that's not how i recall the events you know yeah it's it's a little bit of like i feel like the filmmakers covering their ass saying hey you can't sue us because we're also saying that maybe it didn't happen this way but but i liked how it was done can i can i make a because it didn't make me feel like i was being too manipulated it made me feel like okay you're really showing me a version of the events as tanya harding recalls them but you're also letting me know that we're seeing it from her perspective based on these based on this interview not so solely i think this is the singular truth so something that Definitely, I find fascinating and I think is a a huge component of the movie that I'm not sure a lot of people know. And Becky, I think you as a documentary filmmaker being in in that world would appreciate. And I don't know if it's something that's something that everybody knows or it's not it's a hidden thing or not an obvious thing. I read an article a little while ago about the movie, about the director, and the movie was supposed to be a documentary. I don't know if. Like that's obvious. People know that. No, I didn't know. That no, I had no idea. Yeah, so he, I think it's a do- he's a documentary filmmaker, and his idea was he was going to make a documentary about what happened, and got both of them, the um, Tanya Harding and her ex boyfriend or ex husband, to to sit down for hours of interview for his documentary, and as he's interviewing and, and is is creating the like the the bulk of what will be his film. He is sho- was shocked by the fact that they had completely two different versions of the same story, mm-hmm. and 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 was like, "This is unbelievable! Like, how good?" One thing is like, "Yeah, there's like the your story, my story, and the truth, right?" But he was mm-hmm. like, "They're it, they're completely different of the same events. Hmm. 
how is that possible? And he was like, I can't, how am I going to make a documentary about this? This is fiction. This has to be a fiction movie because that's the only way to portray both sides, like somewhat legitimately. And I think this is where actually the story needs to go to give it, to give it its just due. And I'm a hundred percent right. And the, I think the reason the film is so good is because it's based on not like an article that about Tanya Harding or about whatever. It's about the, the these two people who sat down and, and gave complete right. detail to the filmmaker, which doesn't often happen. It's based on a book, but, right? It's based but on the one whatever. thing that they seem to agree on is that she was not responsible for exactly Nancy Kerrigan's exactly. injury. And so which and I feel I like that's it, such a key right. detail. And I think that's amazing to hear when you know that it's a documentary and you know that the reason he made it a film, a fiction, was because they couldn't agree on anything. But yet the one thing they both do agree on is that she actually did not know. mean to hurt her in any way that more than a prank. And she wasn't involved, you know. Right. Then it makes it that that hit home so hard. And I thought that was such an important part of the film that you're like, holy crap, like Shai said, everything I ever thought and the whole public thinks about this woman. I kind of was like, oh, my God, she was like Monica Lewinsky, but nobody knew. Like, right. Yeah, and it's it, amazing because I'm watching it with mom. And mom's like, I don't understand. I thought she I thought she like hired me her up it and, or did right. it. Herself, Your mom or... remembered that version of the story that she tells us. Mm-hmm. Some people remember the version of the story where I actually beat down Nancy Kerrigan, which didn't yeah. happen. I... I remember when that was a thing that people said that mm-hmm. she was the one that hit her herself. I remember that vividly being a kid and being like, like shocked by that. And then that wasn't even true, of course, um, which and there wasn't even Facebook and all that stuff like there is now. The way the story Never, was told to us so by, by, by the way it was covered back then, it was she was the villain. Nancy Kerrigan was sort of the idealized, almost princess-like character, which they reference in the, they reference in the story a lot. Right. And it was almost like wrestling, like a good guy and a bad guy. And I remember actually when the Olympics happened, and I feel guilty about it now, it was like as if the story had been written for me to feel good that Tanya Harding didn't win a medal. And and to f- and not feel bad that Nancy Kerrigan only got the silver, but thinking, but I was told almost like, oh well, if she hadn't been hit in the knee, she probably would have won the gold. Yeah, which right. was kind of silly because Oksana Bayul, I think, was. What do I know about skating? I'm forget. I'm not gonna like, <laughs> pretend I know anything about skating. In fact, until this movie, I will say this: until this movie, I pretty much never appreciated olympic skating like i never really, oh, really cared about it i've never cared about it it's actually something that's really bought tanya me. harding didn't win the gold i mean but, sorry uh kerrigan didn't win the no gold. she won the she silver, won silver. Yeah, she won she silver. Won silver. Right, yeah yeah exactly won the gold but i remember that olympics like really really me clearly. too it was a big deal and mm-hmm. i i remember I, I i have never liked the skating part in fact when the i, I mean We'll talk about my relationship with the Olympics another time, but I'm not I'm not the biggest Olympics fan in the world. Will we though? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we yeah. will. I mean, the way the Olympics is now, not a fan of the way it is covered in the United States. It's horrible. Um, but that's interesting. Yeah, but um, the Olympics at the time, but uh, my whole life, the obsession over the ice skating has always annoyed me. I'm like, I don't get it. What is this? It seems super subjective. Which, by the way, the movie totally reinforces. But the mm-hmm. actual. Yes, they do, which I think is also very important to understand about the sport is that because it's so subjective, there's a lot of politics that play into it. This isn't just a race and who crosses the finish line first. Ex- no, exactly. It's about politics. It's about image. It's like synchronized swimming as well as subjective. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, so I'm now more amazed with the physical prowess and the gene, genius and artistry of these performers. And I like it, it also confirms what I hate about the Olympic version of this and how subjective it is. But so to tie it back to the film. One of the things that I realized as the movie was going on is that for you to really for you to root for her and not just be like, oh, this is this wrong side of the tracks person who succeeded despite odds. You have to believe that she was a great skater because I don't remember. Now, I was too young, probably. I think other people maybe did. But I don't remember thinking about the quality as a skater. I was just following the storyline. But the way they filmed the skating scenes. And the way they filmed her face and the way Margot Robbie showed the different emotions and the way they would zoom in and out from her when she was doing the, the big moves and they'd show you her feet or they'd show you her eyes. It, it raised a level of tension and drama and showed me how complicated and the sport was, but how great Tanya Harding was supposed to have been. And mm-hmm. that really helped me connect to the character because 
I believed by midway through the movie, I'm like, oh wow, she she I didn't know what a really care what a triple axle was, but then when I lo- they break down what when the mu- it's, a, it's that's the that's the bet that, that breaks so down. Smart. She breaks down what a right. triple axle, so you understand how nearly impossible it is to do it, and you have to be and such I, an and athlete. I, I, I like the way also that it how they do it. They have the ex husband explain it to you, right? Well, I thought it was Janie that explains it. Maybe they're cutting back and forth between the two. I remember either way. Yeah, I thought it was uh, well done, even how they explain it to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she it was amazing, and it really sells the overall story. Um, Let's talk about let's talk about the performances. So there were some amazing performances in this. One of them, Oscar winning. Who was yeah. the who was the actor that knocked your socks off the most? Her, I, I, she was Robbie, phenomenal. yeah, Margot yeah, Robbie, she's phenomenal. Me, just, I, and had had three just, billboards not come out this year, she 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 deserved it. But Fran, there's no co- competition with Francis after three billboards. But taking that movie aside, because that's just a coincidence, those both came out this year. Robbie was phenomenal. Yeah, I me. I was so impressed. I felt like she physically changed. For like she's she's like such a beauty, right? She's just like a classic beauty. Everyone's so obsessed with her looks, and I and I you, she had had such a transformation. The makeup was done so well, the hair, the costuming, and then just in each of her expressions, you could feel her hardness, right? Yeah. Um, and she really was an yeah. athlete. And what I liked about it is that she was such a tough, intense athlete. And I felt like if you were watching a story about a, about a man competing in any other sport these characteristics that she has is something that would be praised but because it's figure skating it's something that worked you know to her detriment so totally so if i were to compare it to so the only so this is now one of two skating movies i love because the only other one i've loved until now cutting edge Cutting edge. Uh, I, you guys Mighty like Ducks. the Cutting Edge. That's not my. Mighty oh, Ducks. oh, Mighty Ducks. Is, that's a hockey movie. That's a sports movie. That's a hockey movie. Uh, no, no. Oh, you Blades mean of Glory. Skating. I'm talking about Blades of Glory. Blades, with, Blades of with Glory. Will, with Will Ferrell and John Heater. Yep. That movie's um, that's a good one. amazing. I feel like it's also a very realistic portrayal of the like, ice skating. <laughs> but the skating. character there, Chaz Michael Michaels, who is the bad boy <laughs> of skating. In some ways, I, when they were showing her and the music that she was dancing to, she was kind of like the Chaz Michael Michaels, you know, of skating. And well, I mean, they're like, yeah, she's like the Bob Fosse of Broadway or whatever. Like, she's cha- she was trying to change things. And she was she kind was of doing just, it her own way. Again, yeah. maybe it's revisionist history, but I'm like, wow, that's really awesome. Way cooler well, music, way cooler becomes- moves kind of one of the questions is in those aspects of it is it revisionist history the 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 extent to which we sympathize with her is that because that's what's going to make for a great film or is that because that's really no, the truth I, and that's you know what where i think i, I think very controversial no i think that that's you know it's funny to me that's not that's the exact thing that's not controversial to me oh. because i think that what I found excellent about the film is that you have this very controversial story, right? Where someone who that we that clearly made very bad decisions and involved herself and allowed people that were very bad to be involved in her career and life. And it's probably not her fault from when you get the background of her story, but it's complex. And that to me is the controversial part, right? But then you have an opportunity that the filmmaker chose with probably the like amount of hours he has of interview with her, where she's breaking down and explaining what it was like for her as a figure skater coming from the background that she came from just shining a light on like this disturbing dark part of this sport. And in this sport, it's clearly a class issue, which is really interesting. And I think that people don't think about and then know about that. And that's what is shown a light on and the ugly side of it in terms of this girl was at one time the most talented and clearly the most brave athlete in this sport and was treated like absolute crap. And she's treated like crap her entire life, which Nobody seems to care right, at all about. So, right, but this whole, but this is what I'm saying is that what I'm going back to my to my previous point that what I loved about this movie is how much it made me sympathize with her and root for her. But right. I also feel as um and I and put it this way, it's it's like I re- it makes me love the movie that they did such a good job to get me to understand her, root for her, sympathize with her. Right. So I'm like, wow, good job, amazing storytelling. And then the other part of me goes, whoa, I was just convinced to root with someone who's supposed to be kind of like the villain. Like, where's where's that balance of the story that maybe she wasn't 
you know, uh, in, you know, even though she had this awful background, was she also maybe an abusive person herself or, um, did, I don't know, you know what I'm getting at? Like, where's well, my... I see what you're saying. Cause if, if, when you, for people who like, when you see the movie, if, if his version is somewhat correct, we're led to believe that her version is the correct one or we want right. to side with her. Yes. But if you stop and think about the fact that his whole version exists and it's laid out for you, he says that she abused him and he defended himself and she was heavily abused. So you can, you know, why not? Right. But we, I guess we tend to side with her. Um, so that, that makes a very complex situation for an audience member. Yeah. I just, I, I loved it. I loved it. I loved yeah. the performance. I thought they did such a great job, but it doesn't, but I loved it as a film. I'm not taking it as a piece of um, of like historical documentation, okay, right? And I think so, you're not, I don't think you're supposed to. Yeah. So I'll cl- I'll cl- let's, I'll wrap it up with I'll, I'll take the last word and I'll and I'll just say that the thing that I my concluding sort of thoughts when I wrote my notes about the film was that you know how I'm to me it read particularly particularly the second half once they get around the incident it was like a real life Coen Brothers movie. Like, you know how yeah. I, I, I don't always Ooh. love, you know how I, I'm like 50, 50 on not Coen brothers, amazingness, they're geniuses, but some of their movies like Fargo, for example, where there's like regular people making stupid decisions that have catastrophic <laughs> results that gives me a lot of anxiety and this movie. And it also, I'm always like, would this really even happen? And this movie essentially lays out exactly one of those scenarios. Yes. Where these like, yes. stupid people are doing stupid, stupid things. Stupid people making stupid making things. Decisions, decisions and trusting stupid people. Just the character, I can't think of his name, but Keith from Kingdom, yeah. the, the the supposed bodyguard. His character, the fact that this is, you're watching going, there's no way this is a real person. And then you see his interview at the end, and it's literally like word for word. Oh yeah, that is what the performance is based on, and you're. I was just. It gave me chills. So I was like, how crazy. Well, wait. That, I just want to. Yeah, because that's that brings me to just one quick point. I think there's very few movies that we see in general where every single person in the movie is excellent. They yes. brought it. Oh yeah, like, every everyone. And they was did perfect exactly in this their movie. job. Even the coaches, the two coaches that she ends up having, like every oh, wow. single person they put on screen was phenomenal. That makes the movie really yeah, good when yeah, you're yeah, watching a movie. Mar- Mar- Margot Robbie, um, Robbie, Margot Rob- Robbie, Robbie, Cre- Robbie, credit because she produced. I mean, didn't she produce the film? Like she acquired yeah. the rights and produced it through, through her own company. Yeah. And I'm just watching, going like, man, this woman has vision, and she's a serious heavyweight if she can perform at that level, and but then also have a vision when you know when she hears a story like this or reads a script or however it came about, and you know she didn't direct the film. She obviously also smart enough to know where to bring in great talent but i was so like double impressed that she had um that she had a, a very strong hand in getting the film made so so yes i tanya amazing we loved it all right now let's cut to what have we been watching folks do you guys have stuff that you've been watching i have some stuff i have some stuff that i want to recommend to people that's coming up I've been. I want to. I want to circle back to something I've been listening to. So I had mentioned a couple weeks ago. I've been. List, I listened to an episode of Armchair Expert with that Zach Braff was on, and I was like, oh my god, it reminded me. Is you that, know, is that the Dak Shepard? That's the Dak Shepard. I have been consistently listening to it and consistently enjoying it. So hmm. now I'm giving it like a full endorsement. I really enjoy this podcast. Um, the same way that people tell us, hey, it feels like I just got to like hang out with the three of you for like an afternoon and listen. It feels like I'm just kind of like hanging out with Dax and whoever he's interviewing. And the interviews are such wonderful conversations. And I've really been enjoying that podcast. I want to hang out. Um, cool. Oh, oh, oh. And, and I saw Jumanji. And I think it's just really reinforcing how much I love The Rock. Yeah, like he's, he, he's so, amazing. He's floating on air right now. I love like him. He is so charming. The movie was silly and adorable. Don't go in there with an expectation of anything other than this is going to be like a silly, cute movie. But it was like it was it just put a smile on my face. I enjoyed it. I, I saw a bunch of articles written about this movie Rampage, which is based on a video game that I loved when I was little, but I'm sure has nothing to do with it, that it did pretty well at the box office, and all of the reviews said, well, I guess this proves The Rock can pretty much sell anything. <laughs> I mean, it does. But but I will say one of the best parts is Jack Black having to act as if he's like a teenage girl, a, like a teenage girl obsessed with Instagram, and he's so 
funny and believable yeah, actually he, he was great and and wait back i i um you did watch at my recommendation an episode of the detroiters which i was watching which is this show on comedy central that i bought i mean i bought that season because i was halfway through the season God, and i was like i need to own this show the levels the levels on which i enjoyed that i can't even begin to tell you i enjoyed it just as a viewer of going that's something that's funny then i enjoyed it as someone who works in you know film and video production and the two main characters own like a business where they make commercials like these like really schlocky commercials and i'm watching and the bit of like we'll just digitalize it we'll just digitalize it in post like making up nonsensical Go technical back. terms of things that people can just like magically do for you that is the world i live in and, that is my and, world. and then at the end of the at the end of the episode when he goes we digitalized it and he looks at the camera and oh, no, he looks back at her at the intern the film intern the running bits between them and their filmmaker in turn is hilarious. I think I should recommend yes. going back to the first episode. And but the, the dynamic, again, you know, you know how it's like, well, why do we love, what's one of the reasons we love Parks and Rec? We love Parks and Rec because there's no like villain character in it. Like they're all friends. What I love about it is that the two main characters are best friends and they act, like, it's a little, it's like the over the top version of what best friends would be. But like, I see a lot of similarities between shy, you and your best friends and these two characters. <laughs> there's a lot yeah. of hugging. Yeah, there's, there's, a lot of hugging. there's a lot of hugging. There's, there's a lot of hugging. Um, there's a lot of hugging. Um, and I will say what, something that led me to believe is that, um, or led me to want to ask a question was, so the bromance of this show is amazing. The dynamic between um, mm -hmm. uh, Tim Robinson and Sam Richardson is just mm -hmm. incredible. And then I realized, why, what gravitates people to bromances, right? Like, think about great bromance movies. I Love You, Man, um, yeah, yeah. Role Models. I don't know. There, there's just tons of great bromance movies, and bromance sometimes becomes a big thing. People are into bromance movies and things. What do you think attracts people to that kind of relationship that makes that relationship fun. Lethal Weapon, the TV show, is very I, much built around the bromance I think thing. I have an answer. Okay. First thing that popped in my head is that what you're seeing is a vulnerability between two men that's not often represented. But I think when when men can see that vulnerability represented, it makes them feel a little bit safer and better and going, hey, like, like I love you, man. That's like, why I love I you, man is so popular. Closer. Maybe like I could be that close with my friends or it's normal to want to have a, a relationship that's that close. So I think it's 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 projecting out there a very real desire of men who have been taught, you know, to probably squash down their feelings and their vulnerabilities a bit more. That's that's why I think. Maybe, so yeah, bad. that's. I mean, for me, I, I will say it's a I little mean, bit exaggerated, but my yeah. best friends and I are close the way those types of characters are, which is, I'm sure, to help you enjoy it a little bit, like you said. Yes. Uh, all right, so the Detroiters is is a really funny, and it has a sweetness about it's on Comedy Central. I, I again, I just bought the whole first season um, on Amazon Prime, which I, I'm going to start buying. I think more and more shows and movies through Amazon and not through iTunes. iTunes really needs an overhaul. They're they are not sticking with the times in terms of functionality. Their TV app is a freaking disaster. That is it's the horrible. it's the worst app for watching never, anything so, ever. I never, yeah, it's awful. Half the times it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. It's really it takes bad. forever to load. You can't do we variable it was quality. Like, like, I had a first generation Apple TV, so we always just figured it was because it was so old. No, mom that bought app us is a piece of crap. Mom bought us the brand new Apple TV. Not much better. No, I just don't use that app. I just go to movies or TV. You can't even open it. Like Shai said, it just sits there forever, and you're like, oh, forget it. I'll just go to Netflix. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, one thing I want to correct from last week also is that I said I didn't like any Netflix programming. That's not correct. I think I like a preponderance of Amazon dramas and comedies, but Netflix has troll hunters. Stranger Things is Netflix. Str yeah, you ne don't ne love Stranger Things. I, 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 right. I, no, I like Stranger <laughs> Things. No, but, <laughs> but, but it's not fair to me to say I don't glow. like You like Netflix. Glow. But exactly. You were a Glow I, fan. I, I actually love Glow. I love Stranger Things. I love... Um, I love Troll Hunters. Troll Hunters. I think is amazing. Although that's Guillermo del Toro and DreamWorks. I'm not sure how much. I'm not sure how much of those things are Netflix created of that particular thing. But Glow is a Netflix production. Uh, a series of unfortunate events well, is also really well done. So I'm not hating completely on but, Netflix, but no. But Amazon, you had a, you were think, on point I, when you said percentage. that there's just way too much crap on there. There's that's, also yeah. it's it's not easy for us to I think necessarily know the difference off the bat. But I actually believe. Like if you if you were to to really 
sort through the Netflix original content, there is a very big difference in quality, I think, between Netflix acquired content that gets branded as original, that being the much better stuff, versus right. the Netflix produced content which tends right. to be clearly they luckier. buy they just pick up stuff but they the stuff that they pick up stuff. i think yeah. tends to be better than what they actually make in house which is a little schlockier yeah Oops. and they right so anyways okay. i just want to retract some of the the anger that i sent at, at netflix lil what about you are you watching anything anything you want to recommend um i not sure i can recommend it i think you and i should we had a whole long conversation about this the other day um on the phone so I, I, I think you have to be a very specific TV watcher to be into it. But if you are, this show is fascinating and it is billions. That show like is so inc- complex mm, and, really? and, and intricate. And I'm, I'm just flabbergasted by the writers who create the show. I will say that it, it does better than any show I think I've ever watched. And Chai, maybe you agree, where you literally cannot keep track of good and bad. The mm. good guy is the bad guy. The bad guy is the good guy constantly. Yeah. And and it really blurs those lines. And it's so you like just like don't like any of the characters then? But you're you not really love rooting for anybody. anyone? The, you well, rooting I, for everybody even when they're really bad. No, so it's I'm, like I, I will say I'm pretty emotion. much I'm pretty much never rooting for Axe. I Axe, like even guess, even if the good guys sometimes become bad because they make bad choices, particularly the main character no, Chuck. I mean I mean within the good guys. They break it to the point where within the good guys, some good guys are bad guys. All right. This is confusing. Next. Billions is a good show. It, Billions is a good show. But I'm losing I, I, I'm losing my, my momentum with it, but it's a good show. It's kind of like I feel like with Ray Donovan. Ray Donovan's last season, I had to uh, just stop yeah. watching. It was not. And that's a uh, – that was boring. too hard. I'll get back to it because I just want to know what happened, but that was really boring. Um, so let's see. On my recommendations list, we finished Broadchurch. Last night we we had Isn't that really the dark. End. It was dark, it's but a- dark. Allie really likes this. Is the this is one of many sort of British true crime type of show? Not true crime, but like murder mystery type of shows. We watched the five, very similar to that. Allie's really annoyed though because it's, let's say it's ten episode season. At episode five, I figured out I, I narrowed it down to two suspects, and essentially had been saying all along that I thought it was one of the characters, and I ended up being right, and uh, that kind of annoyed her. But didn't um, it feel so good that you said it out loud and then you were right? Oh, yeah, like yeah, keeping yeah. it to yourself? Uh, yeah. And, and it was, you've been like, I knew this the whole time. It, 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 nobody it, believes right. you? It, it was good acting. And David Tennant, who was the main actor who played um, uh, Kilgrave in Jessica Jones, another good Netflix show. Mm-hmm. Uh, really? He, he, I think it's a good show. I like the first one. I, well, I, I like slogged second. my way through season one. Well, no, I like the first Ugh. season. I didn't watch the second <laughs> season. But he was the best part of that. And he's the best villain Marvel's ever put on screen. He is amazing as the main as the main character in Broadchurch, the detective. So so that that was really cool. I'm glad we finished it. But only if you're really into like the murder mystery kind of one murder mystery and its horrible effects on people uh, in a small mm-hmm. town. Uh, a show that is starting up again this week is Into the Badlands, uh, season three. It is this awesome post-apocalyptic future with sword fights and um, uh, this really interesting universe that was built. It has really cool politics of a future world. It has a little bit of magic, but not too much magic that it gets annoying. It's a really, really fun, cool, epic show. They they had a first season and they took like, and it was just kind of a small show in that first season. They took like a year and a half off and then they came back with the second season, which was amazing and epic. And it almost had this like beyond the Thunderdome Mad Max element to it. Really, really fun show. Tio Mario is the person who gets the I Told You show for that one. Yes. He, he, he was the first person ever to even tell me about that show. And I, what I would do is I would start season two, if you get a chance. I think it's on Netflix. It's really, really fun. And there's great fight scenes and martial arts. and I mean, amazing. Some of the best fight scenes I've ever seen on a show are on that show. Um, and then some other shout outs or, or, or comments from folks. Gato, our good buddy at Gato One Dog, suggested we watch Lost in Space on Netflix. So we'll have to. Check. Oh yeah, I'm I'm gonna start that. I'm excited to. I think I might dig into that later later this this afternoon or this evening. I remember the movie from the '90s. I wasn't that into it, but my main oh, thing. So terrible. The main thing that got me excited about Lost in Space is that when I went there, down my you can't do that on television rabbit hole, I realized that one of the kids who is on that show is has a bit part in Lost in Space. So I'm kind of curious to see him act as a grown up. And then our good buddy Duncan a while ago 
um, uh, recommended, and I, I failed to mention this recommendation, Duncan Scott, a.k.a. The Wrecker, on Twitter. He recommended that we watch a show called The Terror on AMC. Badlands is also on AMC, but oh. The Terror on AMC, which is about the Northwest Passage. And, man, I always thought, growing up in Canada, there are certain things you always hear about. Fur trapping, the Northwest <laughs> Passage, um, the Halibut Treaty, things like that. And the so, Halibut Treaty? Did you just make that up? No, the Halibut Treaty is a thing. We'll see about that. Um, so, yeah. So that's those are those are my things I'm checking out um, that that I'm that I'm looking forward to checking out. You guys have any shout outs? Any final shout outs to folks? I've had my head like stuck in the sand all like week, so I don't even know. All right. Um, well, I have I have not opened social media, so I I cannot shout out. Okay. Beck. I will. Um, I believe yeah. you made frijoles with cousin Vanessa this week. We did. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, shout out to Cousin Vanessa, who got uh, a, a you know, what what's the word I'm looking for? Baby brain? Um, she got a, an in-person uh, lesson with, with mom on how to make how to make frijoles negros, black beans. So that was super fun. Cuban and then I put style. it up on the blog, which so is great. Good. So I can, eat those, I can eat those cold for breakfast, mom's Cuban black beans. They are so know. incredible. They're so good. So if you want to grab that recipe, it's actually up on the blog right now. And then, you know, uh, since I'm already talking about the blog, everydayout.com, I'm going to shout out to Janine G, my, uh, my, my partner in crime, my... My oat, my other oat, the other oat of the of the everyday oat blog, who I uh, do these recipes with. You know, we've been doing it for about a year now, and still going strong. So, hey, Janine, thanks for blogging with me. Super. All right. Well, uh, I want to give a shout out to Old School Evil. Uh, he is an awesome uh, writer, pop cultureologist, on that I've encountered on Twitter. But he is writing a book on cartoon villains. Is there a cooler? Is is there a book that I, I you know I don't read many books, but that is a book I am 100 percent going to buy when it comes out, and I'm going to read. I'm looking forward to, and that apparently is going to be out soon. And the best, one of the best things about engaging with old school evil on Twitter is that he is in this hilarious feud that lots of other people tend to stoke. It's, it's a good natured feud. It's not a, it's not an actual feud, but a uh, Twitter feud with the bonsai retro club between two eighties cartoons, mask and bionic six. And I, I fall definitely on the team mask side. Bonsai is on the bionic six, but people will often just bump, jump into their conversations and stoke the fires. Me being one of the people between them in this Twitter feud. And it's a really fun Twitter feud to be a part of. <laughs> I, uh, that's cute it's a cute it's a it's a good natured twitter feud um all right so the music will kick in we'll listen to the theme song by what does it eat and lily where can people follow you ggk gomez on twitter i had to take a leave of absence for i shy called me the other day and he's like no you know check out twitter or whatever and i was like i cannot open my phone I can't, like, I was like, I have, like, I'm on lockdown. I'm like, I can't do it. Like, I'm not, I don't have permission. <laughs> so I was like, on Sunday night, I will get back into it. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to tweet more this week and share, you know, random tidbits. But GK Gomez, Twitter. Um, cool. Beck, where can people follow you? What? Where can people follow no, you? Uh, Charity, 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 yeah. No, but follow I guess you didn't. Paper BK just... Princess. <sighs> And the oat, we can, and we can chat every day. The oat, and then we can chat. Right. Uh, yeah, Becky, you guys are fun to chat with on Twitter. Um, mm -hmm. uh, well, you can follow me. Oh, we just got a text, by the way, as this is going on from Pam uh, from the Herspiration Happy Hour, who wants, who's mm -hmm. watching the movie The Intern, and she wants us to do a Robert De Niro retrospective at some point to talk everything from his comedies to his serious dramatic things. So. That's cool, Pam. Mm -hmm. We will do that one day. We have seen probably most, if not all, of his movies. I've even watched the yeah. gr the Grudge Match, the one where he and Stallone box oh, each yeah. other. I, mean, I think really? we can Ooh. pretty much say we've seen all his movies. <laughs> I, I think I saw that movie, but I blocked it out of my mind. Um, so you can follow me at, uh, at Pancake Four Table on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow all of the Pancake Pop Culture Shenanigans at Pancake Four Table dot com. You can follow the podcast at uh, at Friday Night Movie on Twitter, or you can go to the website, FridayNightMoviePod.com. And we really encourage you, if you love the podcast or even like it a little bit, to give us a review, uh, ideally a five-star review, but a review on 
iTunes or whichever program you're using it. It's a free and easy way for you to show support. It helps us get um, noticed in search engines and things like that. It's the it's a, the easiest way to show your love for a podcast that you like. I myself have been doing that a lot lately for our favorite podcasts or some of my favorite podcasts, uh, and I will be posting some of my reviews on Instagram and Twitter over the next couple of weeks to highlight the awesome work that other podcast folks are doing um, and to just generally encourage people to, to if they are loving a podcast, they should go and leave a review. It really helps. Um, and with that, uh, the show is over. Bye, guys. Okay, bye. finish the rest of tour tour name in spanish the rest of what tour which is thor in spanish